Harper, it's been a while. Ha! Huh. Suddenly, I jumped in surprise. The body truly is honest, I think. Faster than the process of hearing a voice and identifying who it is, the body naturally reacts based on past unpleasant emotions. As I cautiously turned towards the voice, I saw my ex-husband. Beside him was a little girl. He wore a lecherous smile at the corner of his mouth, sarcastic and overly familiar. Despite legally becoming strangers, I found his intrusive presence unpleasant. And there I was, once again questioning why I ever married such a person, a self-reflection I'd done thousands, if not tens of thousands, of times before. Reflecting on past mistakes, I often found myself in a loop of self-blame and remorse. But strangely, my current husband liked that side of me and even married me. He's very kind and principled. Well, compared to this guy. And then, my ex-husband, with his overly familiar tone, spoke up. What's wrong? What are you doing here? And it annoyed me how puzzled he sounded. Just today was the elementary school entrance ceremony, with the school bustling with new students clad in oversized uniforms and their parents. In that moment of contemplating how to respond. But you're infertile, aren't you? He interjected with such a comment. That feeling, the shiver of discomfort, returned. Yes, our divorce undoubtedly began because of this issue. But now I believe it was merely the catalyst. In today's world, many couples are struggling with infertility. And normally, such issues surface after marriage. However, despite such a significant problem, many couples remain together. The issue, I think, lies in how they confront it. In other words, how they face infertility. He only ever insulted me as infertile and never bothered to investigate the real cause. With a smirk during morning greetings. Morning, infertility. I remembered thinking it was all over. Now, the girl he's holding hands with seems to be his child. The reason we couldn't have children when we were married was simply a matter of compatibility. It seems it was a message from God. Since then, I have remarried. In the same department, a beautiful girl got promoted thanks to a successful project. I'm really happy. While saying such things without being asked, he ruffled the girl's hair beside him. So, what about you? What are you doing here? Did you come to see the kids? Or maybe you're starting to want kids. I couldn't understand how he could say such rude things with a smile on his face. Can you just not approach me if you see me? That was all I could muster. I felt sick to my stomach. The next day, Monday, past 10 in the morning. Glad I took the day off from my part-time job. Muttering to myself, I jumped at the sudden ring of my cell phone. An unfamiliar number. Though I didn't feel great, I answered, saying, hello. Hey. It was nice seeing you again yesterday. It was my ex-husband. For us, with no children and no significant assets to divide, there were no good memories worth keeping each other's contact information for. So, as we embarked on different lives starting tomorrow, the first thing I did was delete his number, and I ended up changing my phone number several times. Yet, what came through the phone was my ex-husband, whom I had just met after a long time and felt terrible about. It's natural to end up questioning. Why do you have this number? Oh, sorry, sorry. We met yesterday. Remember? My wife was watching you, and she recognized you. Huh? Don't you remember Avery, 
Who was with us from elementary through middle school? Avery. Avery. It's sad how quickly it's become a distant memory. Oh, right, right. We were in the same class in fifth and eighth grade. And, sorry, but I don't have many good memories with her either. She, clad in designer brands, scrutinizes people from head to toe as if evaluating them. A chilling few seconds. Crushes, boyfriends, career choices. In the end, what matters is how people perceive you. And such a mindset, a way of life, felt burdensome and never quite fit. But when I met her again at a reunion about 10 years ago, she didn't have that unfriendly, mean streak from our school days, and somehow, we ended up exchanging phone numbers in the flow of the moment. Now, Avery and my ex-husband are married. Well, they've settled down where they should, and that's the only way to put it. A strange sense of fittingness. Heard she was with kids. Are they stepkids? No, they're not. I found myself speaking in a naturally irate tone. He's truly rude. Well, it's tough to handle stepkids, you know. Well, maybe it's inevitable for infertile women like you. I'm telling you they're not. They're mine and my husband's. Oh, there you go again. Stop showing off. Did he call just to say these things? It's becoming ridiculous to engage seriously. Stop calling for trivial matters. With that, I pressed the end call button. Talking to this person always ends up like this. Some time passed, and it was the day of our child's sports festival. Unfortunately, due to work, my husband would join us later. The children, slightly more excited than usual, were eagerly anticipating the lunch I made for them after getting up a bit earlier than usual. I'll finish up and join you before lunchtime. He said, heading out. We managed to secure a spot in the shade behind the school building where we could leisurely eat our lunch. As we headed towards the entrance gate to catch a glimpse of the children who would soon participate in the main event of the pre-lunch, the relay race, Avery stopped us. Harper? Is that you? Honestly, there was a slight unease in attending this event. Could it be, Avery? Though I knew, I wanted confirmation, maybe to escape reality for a bit. I can't believe you two were married. Without much of a greeting, she boldly inserted herself into our conversation, just as she used to. I was surprised when I heard from my husband. As she finished speaking, Avery leaned closer to my ear and whispered. You're infertile, right? Tough luck, having three stepkids. That's not it, they're my children. Ah, come on, I understand wanting to keep it a secret. With that, she lowered her voice even further. Oh, I see, you haven't told the kids either. Got it, won't tell anyone. Talking to these people always leads to such conversations. I was about to try to deny it by raising his voice again. Hey! A goofy voice was heard. I was just talking to Harper. She insists those kids are hers. Can you believe it? Really, she is still stuck in her fantasies. Maybe even marrying wasn't real, huh? With that, they both laughed. The phrase rude couple echoed in my mind, and at the same time, it felt foolish to respond seriously anymore as if it were a waste of time. However, the overconfident couple seemed to have no sense of when to stop. If I knew she was infertile, I wouldn't have married her. 
Yeah, seriously. But Harper, you missed out. Since you two split, he became a section chief. He's on the fast track to success within the company, you know? Well, you wouldn't have known, I guess. Saying that she proudly looked at her husband with admiration. I thought, a company where people like this get promoted must have a questionable bottom line, but I didn't say it out loud. Hey, that's rude to say. He scolded his wife, but then he too stood proudly. They are a foolish couple. But seriously, how long do I have to endure such nauseating conversations? Just as I pondered this, my three children arrived, and I heard, Mom. If this foolish couple were to say something about them being stepchildren or anything like that, I'd yell at them. I was thinking about that, but then. Oh, what cute kids. She said with a shameless tone as they started to walk away. But then, in the next moment, the children exclaimed, Dad, and happily waved in another direction. Hey, hey, about that gentleman. Your curious husband. Avery tried to add more words, but my ex-husband's reaction was unexpectedly cold. His face visibly paled, and he started trembling. Avery peered at his face as he looked down, confused by his sudden change. While my children ran over to him, my husband, Daniel, appeared. Hello. With an impeccable smile, genuinely refreshing, I couldn't help but smile too, which felt particularly relieving today. You don't look too good. Are you okay? Daniel showed genuine concern even to someone he just met. Meanwhile, my ex-husband, upon hearing this, couldn't even lift his head further. It's been hot today, and maybe it's the usual hectic work? Also, my husband works for a large corporation. It's a critical moment for him whether he'll become a department head. Despite saying he just became a section chief earlier, he's now boasting like crazy. Oh, a big corporation. Wow, this is important. Let me give you my business card. Without waiting, Daniel took out his business card and started introducing himself. I almost exclaimed, what? If Daniel's and my ex-husband's companies were in business together. In that case, I could somehow understand my ex-husband's sudden change. Well, I... He tried to leave, unable to bear it. I pretended to be a first-time meeting to see how you were doing, but I heard that you and Harper were previously married. Huh. Uh, yes. That's right. It's been a while, so I just ended up saying hi. That's all. Just saying hi. I've been watching you closely until just now. It doesn't seem like anything. You were calling Harper infertility over and over again, weren't you? Does it still seem like nothing? No, it's just... The test results, and... Harper told me she's never taken any tests. Daniel further admonished the speechless ex-husband, as if he were repaying what they had done to me. It's very rude, but aren't you morally wrong? Calling someone's wife infertility. I think many people in the world are suffering from this, don't you? Once proud, he shrunk like an insignificant bug. Also, we'll be discontinuing any business with your company. I can't work with someone of such a despicable character. I'll be sure to convey this to your superiors. Upon hearing the words he least wanted to hear, he pleaded, Please spare me, and slump down on the spot. However, Daniel paid no heed and started walking, 
holding the children's hands. As Avery looked back, she shook the pale-faced shoulder. Get it together. Something like that, maybe. Later, I heard through the grapevine that the couple had divorced. The ex-husband's actions, singled out as I don't want to do business because of that person, even though they were once a couple, were deemed severely lacking in character and dignity by the higher-ups. And inevitably, unable to overturn the flow of events where he lost an important client, the ex-husband resigned. It's said he's struggling with a remaining mortgage on the house and the ongoing expenses of the children. And Avery, who easily discarded her ex-husband and chose the path of divorce, was deceived and left in tatters by a man she met at work. Meanwhile, I continue to live each day, grateful for my husband who has always been there for me, protecting me, and watching over the children's growth in our ordinary daily life. Certainly, for those who want children, it's an undeniable desire. However, even in situations where that desired outcome isn't achieved, I think there's a way to accept it and live with just the two of you. Even if you can't climb the corporate ladder, I believe you can still enjoy life day by day. If you can be grateful and appreciate each day, those days will come, I think. So, I'll continue to be thankful and enjoy life with Daniel and the children. Isn't that enough? I feel that way now, and I sincerely hope to continue feeling that way in the future. How did you find this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Well then, let's meet in the next video.